The next set of lectures deals with cancer as an evolutionary process. We're going to be looking both at the microevolutionary uh, clonal evolution that characterizes every cancer, and we're also going to see how phylogenetic tools help us to understand the history of cancers as they grow and metastasize. Let's begin with some cancer basics. Types of cancers, hallmarks of cancers, prevalence of cancer, trends in cancer risk, and why we are susceptible. First, some definitions. A tumor is any abnormal swelling of the flesh, and it's derived from Latin for swelling, and it is not synonymous with cancer. Cancer is a group of diseases that are characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells with the potential for invading and dispersing. A neoplasm is an abnormal mass of cells that's caused by overproduction, and a benign neoplasm is localized and not cancerous, for example, skin moles. However, they can uh, also be pre-malignant. A pre-malignant neoplasm doesn't invade and destroy, but given time, they can evolve. So a classic example is a colon polyp or a dysplasia that is an abnormal cell development. A malignant cancer is one that is, has metastasized. Clonality means descent from a single progenitor cell. So all the cells within a clone have a single genotype. Cancers traditionally have been classified a number of ways. One is by tissue type, so there are carcinomas, which are from epithelial cells. They form 90% of all tumors. They're derived from ectoderm or endoderm. There are sarcomas, which are derived from connective tissue. They are about 2% of all tumors, and they're derived from mesoderm. And then there are leukemias, which are circulatory or lymphatic. They form about 8% of all tumors, and they are derived from mesoderm. Then there is classification by cell type. Cancers can come from squamous cells, which are flat. They can be myeloid, that's coming from blood cells. They can be lymphoid, that means that they are derived from lymphocytes or macrophages. And they can be adenomatous, so that means they are derived from ductal or glandular cells. That would be colon, thyroid, and prostate cancer. So cancer is many different diseases, and they have many different characteristics. What are its hallmarks? Cancer cells no longer need external signals to stimulate their proliferation. They become autonomous. They ignore signals to shut down their proliferation. They suppress their own programmed cell death, so they will not undergo apoptosis. They can divide indefinitely. They do this by stabilizing their telomeres. They have increased mutation rates. They become genetically very heterogeneous. They can evade the immune system. They can induce angiogenesis. That is, they can induce the growth of new blood vessels. They can metastasize, which means that they can move and colonize new parts of the body. So those are the hallmarks of cancer. Now, what about the prevalence of cancer? The lifetime risk being diagnosed with cancer in a country like the United States is about one-third. The lifetime risk of breast cancer in women is about 12 percent, about one in eight. Autopsies on individuals who have died of other causes reveal many covert malignant cancers and pre-malignant carcinomas in prostate, breast, kidney, thyroid, and other sites. We all have precancerous mutant clones, thousands of them. If they lived long enough, all men would probably get prostate cancer and all women would probably get breast cancer. To give you some idea of the burden of this disease, here are the estimated number of cancer deaths in 2006 in the United States for men and for women. I'll just mention a couple of the top ones. In both cases, lung and bronchial cancer was the most frequent kind of fatal cancer. 
For men, the second was colon and rectal cancer, and for women it was breast cancer. The third for men was prostate, and the third for women was colon and rectal. So there was a, sexually, a sexual or, uh, system cancer that was in the top three for both men and women. Breast cancer was a bit more frequent than prostate cancer. Then the fourth most frequent was pancreatic cancer. Now, if we look at risk of death by cancer from 1930 to 2003, what we see is that in some cases, a few, there was considerable improvement. For example, the risk of death from stomach cancer in men has been going down. However, the risk of death from colon and rectal cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, and leukemia has been pretty stable. The risk of death from lung cancer rose and then started to fall, and this uh, tracks cigarette smoking. The picture in women was a bit different. The risk of death from uh, colon and rectal cancer has declined a bit in women. The risk of death from stomach cancer, as in men, has declined quite a bit. However, for some of these other cancers, such as ovarian cancer, breast cancer, and so forth, that risk is pretty stable, and women started uh, getting killed uh, by smoking-related lung cancer a bit later than men, and they have not yet benefited quite as much from stopping smoking. Now, we have more cancer than do other species, and there are at least four reasons for that. We now have a post-reproductive lifespan. We've domesticated ourselves. And that's less important to natural selection. So we have a period of our life in which we are surviving, but natural selection is not improving our maintenance. We have highly invasive placentas that are produced by stem cells that are pre-adapted to metastasis. We are mismatched to risk factors that are generated by civilization. So to a certain degree, cancer is a mismatched disease. Those factors include tobacco, alcohol, a high calorie, high fat diet, air and water pollution, and contraceptives. Some of our reproductive cancers may be a byproduct of our unique sexuality. We have continual cycling, continuous receptivity, and the potential for continuous activity so that there are mitoses, there are cell divisions going on in reproductive tissue all the time in humans. And here are just a few figures to make you remember that we're talking about aging, things like smoking, and things like contraception as being cancer risks in humans. So to summarize, cancer is a disease that is caused by inappropriate and uncontrolled cell growth and movement. It is a collection of diseases, not a single disease. It is an increasingly important source of mortality in developed countries. If we lived long enough because we had escaped death for other reasons, we would probably all die of cancer. Our ability to treat cancer has not improved nearly as much as our ability to treat other diseases.